CBS Television Sports presents the National Hockey League. Today, the Minnesota North Stars meet the Boston Bruins. Minnesota North Stars meet the Boston Bruins. Brought to you by the agents of Allied Van Line. We move families, not just furniture. And by Continental Insurance, the company that stands behind you and everything you own. And by Pontiac, the wide track people and your local Pontiac dealer. And by First National City Traveler's Check, available at banks everywhere. This is the Boston Garden, where this afternoon the Boston Bruins beat the Minnesota North Stars. Hello again, everyone. I'm Dan Kelly with Jim Gordon. Welcome to another CBS Game of the Week. The National Hockey League is going into its second last week of the regular schedule. The North Stars have clinched second place in the West Division. They can no longer finish first. Chicago has wrapped that up. But it's a big game for the Boston Bruins, Jim. No doubt about the fact that Boston Bruins are still aware that the New York Rangers are behind them. They trail by just five, the Rangers do, although Boston, of course, has this game in hand. So before the afternoon is over, they could pick up those two big ones. And, of course, our hockey fans across the country are going to be watching perhaps hockey's greatest one-two punch today. Bobby Orr and Phil Esposito. Orr, the brilliant defenseman who leads the league in assists. Esposito, the great center ice star who leads the league in goals. One of the main keys, of course, for the Minnesota North Stars is Gump Worsley, who was Cesar Maniago, has been one of the great backstops. Notice the mouse under his right eye. Gump took a puck full in the nose, knocked him completely unconscious. He is, of course, one of the goaltenders who doesn't wear a mask. That is not the mask, but uh, the one behind him is not his, obviously. He said when he arrived at the garden today, a gentleman met him with four face masks to try out. He said, I'm too old to start that now. He's not too old to play gold. He's a good one and has been over the years. Gump Worsley of the North Stars. Should be an interesting afternoon, the Boston Bruins and the Minnesota North Stars. And we'll be ready for the opening face-off in just a moment. You may think you're stuck with a lemon when all you're really stuck with is a dirty carburetor. Because that's all it may take to make your engine run rough and lose power. But the solution is here. New STP Double Power Gasoline Treatment. Power to clean with power to burn. Add a can next time you fill up. You'll really feel the difference. To prove a point, I'm about to shave without using any water. Nothing to make my beard wet and soft but this. Rise. I'm actually getting a clean shave. The reason... The moisture in rise. Slowly, rise seeps moisture into your beard and holds it there for as long as it takes you to shave. Now, if I can get a shave like this using rise with no water, imagine what you can do using rise with water. Nero, honey, your palace is on fire. Your cash is burning. I never keep cash in my palace. Do you? I keep my money in First National City Traveler's Checks. First National City Traveler's Checks? Even at home, if they're lost or stolen or go up in flames, I'm protected. I can get a refund at over 30,000 places. First National City Traveler's Checks! <laughs> Unless you have money to burn. Once there was a typical young family who didn't want to look typical. They dreamed of owning a mid-sized car with value and pizzazz. Pizzazz! But every mid-sized car they saw looked so typical. Alas, no pizzazz. Pizzazz! They almost gave up hope when there it was, their dream car, a wide-track Pontiac Le Mans, loaded with value and... Pizzazz! Most untypical. If you don't want to look typical, look into an untypical Pontiac Le Mans. Greetings again from the Boston Garden. Dan Kelly with Jim Gordon. This afternoon, the Minnesota North Stars will try and win their first game ever in Boston Garden. And the Bruins will try and move closer to cinching first place in the National Hockey League's East Division. The referee today is Bill Friday. The linesmen are John D'Amico and Terry Pierce. And now, here's our national anthem.
Bruins and the North Stars, Jerry Cheevers, number 30, starting in goal for Boston. He has a 2.30 goals against average and has been in the Bruins' goal for 29 games in a row without a loss. Down at the other end of the rink, Gump Worsley, the 42-year-old veteran who doesn't wear the face mask, starting in goal for Minnesota. The Bruins have had an edge in the North Stars in regular season play this year, winning four, losing none, and one game has ended in a tie. Murray Oliver, number 10 for the North Stars, getting ready to face off. There's Cheevers getting ready to face off. Oliver against number 16, Derek Sanderson. The referee, number three, Bill Friday, drops the puck. It goes to the Minnesota blue line. Tom Reed clears it to Bones. Bones shoots it to center. And number four, Bobby Orr has it. To Dallas Smith, number 20. Out on left wing to Walton, who shoots it into the Minnesota zone. Worsley knocks it off to the side. Sanderson tried to center it. Now here's Oliver. Pass to Nevin that was off the mark. Goes into the Bruins zone. And number 20, Dallas Smith has it. To four, Bobby Orr. Orr turns to get away from Oliver. Cuts back of the net. Pass to Smith. Long pass to Sanderson. Off the mark goes all the way down the ice. Number 21, Danny Grant. Back to touch it for Minnesota. And the Bruins are called for icing. Take a good look at this Minnesota North Star team here this afternoon. Regardless of the outcome of this game, this team has been one of the surprises to many hockey fans the entire year, although they certainly showed in last year's Stanley Cup playoff they're on their way. They are conceivably going to be the big surprise of this year's Cup. They're in second place. They haven't flinched. Winners of 34 games, lost 26, tied 10. Here comes Walton. Pass to Westfall, who shot as wide as the Minnesota goal. Now Sanderson tried to set up Walton. Bob Nevin breaks it up. Back of his own goal to Moans, number six. Doug Moans, who formerly played with the Boston Bruins, as well as the Chicago Blackhawks, passes it to Bob Nevin. Nevin fires it to center. Knocked down by Dallas Smith, and then Reed tips it into the Bruins zone, and Orr is back together. The Bruins nothing, the North Stars nothing. Her here in the... Early minutes of the first period. Now Dallas Smith, number 20. Dick Handling tried to go around Reed. Reed takes him out of the play, just played the man. And Nevin picks up the puck, tried to shoot it out. Or at the point, holding it in. Or fakes the shot. Nevin knocked it off his stick. And Nevin gets it to center ice, and Orr hustles back. With that great speed of his, he can gamble offensively and still get back defensively. Here comes Orr again. Into the Minnesota zone and Westfall, number 18, over on right wing, went in ahead of the play, offside. The action has stopped with 18 minutes and 27 seconds left in the first period. Let's pause for a moment. In the dull and commonplace occurrences of day-to-day -day living, one thing stands out as a completely unique experience. Colt 45 malt liquor. Phil Esposito, number seven. Facing off, the puck goes to Vadney, number 10, a newcomer to the Bruins, shoots it into the Minnesota zone. Back to get it, Ted Harris, number four, the North Star captain. Out on the wing to Parisi, Ken Hodge knocks it down. Hodge and Harris fight for it. Puck along the boards, Esposito and Burns fighting for it there. Still loose, and Parisi comes up with it, number 11. John Paul Parisi into the Bruins zone, a hard shot. Peters made the save and then dove up to get the rebound. And then have a face-off in the Boston zone. The North Stars today playing without the services of Cesar Maniago. Here's the replay, Jim. This is a tremendously hard shot by Parisi, and he, Cheevers just hung with it. It was right at his pads, actually, but it had a lot of steam on it, and Cheevers couldn't hold the rebound, had it dropped down on top. North Stars playing without Cesar Maniago. One of their goaltenders is out with a knee injury. Also, center iceman Jude Druas, sideline with an ankle injury. The Bruins are at full strength, and here comes Esposito, number seven. Bill Esposito, the National Hockey League's leading scorer. One-hand shot hit the side of the net. Barry Gibbs now to Parisi. He lost it, and Esposito has it. Checked by Goldsworthy. Now it's Badney into Hodge to the top side. Number eight, Ken Hodge, in ahead of the play on right wing. Carl Badney, 
playing with the Boston Bruins, wears number 10. He was obtained in a recent trade from the California Golden Seals that saw the Bruins send three young players to the Seals, defenseman Bob Stewart and Rick Smith and young forward Reg Lee. Bad day, shoots the puck into the Minnesota zone. He's a big one, 6'1", 190. And a real rough, tough customer who fits the Bruins' mold. He's also a fine offensive player. Here's Don Ore for the Bruins, shooting it into the Minnesota zone. Back to get it, number nine, Burns. Over on the boards to Gibbs. Cashman intercepting it to Esposito, a bouncing shot. And Worsley stopped that. Now Hodge ran into Ted Harris. Puck comes to center ice. Number 10, Badney with the long shot. Worsley stops it. And Burns is back to get it. Burns passing it out on left wing to J.P. Parisi. His pass to Goldsworthy was too far ahead. Don Ori, number 26, picks it up. Ori, a pass now to Cashman. Wayne Cashman with Esposito on Hodge. Cashman trying to control the puck and stock out the center ice. He fires it back in, and Esposito and Hodge are trapped in there offside. Some fine job so far this afternoon in a very young game by Ken Hodge, who's been doing a beautiful forechecking job, going in and taking out a defenseman on at least three separate occasions uh, to give Boston a fairly good shot at that net. He also, as you saw, made a fine blue line play on his very first turn on the ice, going full length to stop a puck that was being cleared out, kept it in, and the Bruins had a shot. So far, no score. Stanfield, Busick, and McKenzie for the Bruins against Hextall, Prentice, and Nanny for Minnesota. Now it's Dallas Smith on the Boston defense, up to McKenzie, back to Smith. Puck goes to center, Reed knocks it down, it's picked up by Stanfield, number 17. Fred Stanfield into the North Star zone, trying to center it. Gets help from McKenzie, and Hextall third it. Hextall again trying to get down there. Stanfield, a backhand shot to flex wide. Now Tom Reed to Lou Nanny. Nanny tied up by Busick. Stanfield shoots the puck along the board. Prentice, the veteran for the North Stars, carries out on left wing, passes to Lou Nanny. Nanny knocked off balance by Dallas Smith, and Orr has the puck. Orr and Hextall back to the net. Hextall ties up Orr. Nanny comes in. Okay. Trying to get the puck loose, and they hold it there. And we'll have a face-off in the Bruin zone to the left of Jerry Cheevers, who, as I mentioned, has played 29 games in the Bruin goal this year, or at least 29 in a row this year, without suffering a loss. Having a sensational season. Dallas Smith. Tried to clear it out. It's Nanny along the board. Lost the puck. Now Hextall gets it to Dean Prentice. Prentice a backhand shot. Stopped by Orr. And Dallas Smith gets it. Around on the boards on right wing to McKenzie. He feeds it to Stanfield who shot at the center. And Doug Moans has it. Moans with a long flip shot. Caught by Cheevers. He flips it off to Orr. Orr being watched by Hextall. The Bruins nothing, the North Stars nothing here in the first period. Now it's Stanfield, number 17, coming to center ice with a long shot. Worsley handles that, turns it back to the goal to Prentice, who ducks under a check from Stanfield. Now McKenzie battling along the boards, comes up at the puck, around behind the net to Busick. Busick stick handling, trying to center it, he's checked by Moons. Now it's centered to Stanfield. Stanfield, a pass in front and Reed. A good defensive play to break it up, and back comes Moe. Hard shot. Cheevers caught it. Gives it to Dallas Smith. Number 20, Dallas Smith ahead to Stanfield. At center to Orr. Into the North Star zone. He runs into Dean Prentice, and they both go down. Moe's in the corner. Pass to Prentice, number 29. He gives it to Hextall at center. Into Nanny. Back to Prentice. Prentice lets the shot go. Orr blocks it. Prentice again with the puck, centering it to Hextall, a shot, and Peter big stop on Hextall. Now Moans a drive, and that's deflected wide. Johnny Busick for the Bruins, number nine. Gives it to Stanfield, who comes out of his own zone, and play is called. Prentice and Orr had some collision. This is Bobby coming across, and wham, he took the full shoulder, and then went down. Both okay. Referee Bill Friday going over to the Bruin bench. He has something wrong with his skate. The action has stopped with 14 minutes, 28 seconds left in the first period. Let's pause for a moment. We all hope the good times never leave us behind. We face our tomorrows with some peace of mind. But no man has a problem. 
promise of a life without care And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there When you insure your car, or your life, or health, or your home with State Farm, you're making sure someone you can count on will always be around to help. State Farm has more than 10,000 agents throughout the country, so no matter where you live, there's probably one right in your neighborhood. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, referee Bill Friday proves that referees, after all, are human. <laughs> he broke his skate lace, and that's the reason for the delay as he gets a new lace. Next Saturday, CBS will bring you the championship game of this, the 35th annual National Invitation Tournament at Madison Square Garden. Competition continues all week into the final Saturday, with CBS bringing you the title game at 1 p.m. Eastern Time Live. Some of the teams in the second round, Oral Roberts with a record of 26-1, and one, a 20-point winner over 13th-ranked Memphis State, among others. Also Maryland, Jacksonville, and Syracuse. Princeton playing today. 14 minutes and 28 seconds to go. Princeton is the winner today in the NIT. Referees' skate laces are all set. Here's Dan. Face off outside the Bruin blue line and the puck comes into the Minnesota zone and Ted Harris, number four, has it. Over to Barry Gibbs. Pass it center to Grant, number 21. Danny Grant lets a long shot go. Keeper scoops it off into the corner. Here's Nevin for the North Stars, centering it. And it hits a skate and goes all the way back into the Minnesota zone. Barry Gibbs, number two, has it. Gibbs passes it up to Nevin. Nevin gives it to Oliver, who's had a great season for the North Stars. Murray Oliver firing it into the Boston zone. Danny Grant in there to get it. Here's Oliver with the puck. Centers to Nevin. Nevin in front of the net. Couldn't get the shot away. Nevin holding on to that puck. Centers it. Knocked away. Here's Gibbs poking it into the corner. And number 26, Ori, is back to get it. He's on the Boston defense with Vadney, number 10. Ori gives it to Vadney. Carl Vadney, pass at center ice for Walton. Goes all the way down into the Minnesota zone. And it's... Gibbs back to touch it, and the Bruins are called for icing. Badney joining the Bruins, quite a catch for Boston, as he was a man who really came into his own out with the California Golden Seals and was a much sought after player by several clubs in the National Hockey League. And some defensive alignment now, Dan. Here is Ted Harris at the point. Now it goes to Nevin, Nevin to Danny Grant, Grant for Nevin, he couldn't get a stick on it, and back comes Walton, number 11 for Boston, with Westfall. Walton holding on to the puck, gets it into the corner, Gibbs breaks it up, and it's taken by Murray Oliver. Oliver to Nevin, a perfect pass. Nevin moves to center, gives it to Grant. Grant back to Nevin, and it's offside after a neat play by Danny Grant. Murray Oliver on left wing, just a half step across the blue line, and as Dan points out, it was a good play with Nevin timing his pass perfectly and waiting for the fine return, but Oliver just across that line too far. 13-10 to go, no score, Minnesota-Boston at Boston. Oliver, number 10, formerly played with the Bruins, as well as with the Toronto Maple Leafs and Detroit Red Wings, and he's had a big year, 26 goals, second only to Goldsworthy in the goal-scoring column with Minnesota. Buck shot into the North Star zone, Harris back to get it. Trying to pass it out. Held in by Vadney. Vadney's shot goes wide. Now it's Gibbs. Out to Nevin, number 17. Bob Nevin at center ice. The pass to Danny Grant. Vadney races back to get it. Grant, Vadney, late for it on the boards, and they hold it there. One of the faceoff. It's a Bruins zone to the right of Jerry Cheevers with 12 minutes, 40 seconds left in the first period. The Boston Bruins, nothing. The Minnesota North Stars, nothing. Bruins sending out Esposito, Hodge, and Cashman. Hodge back in the Bruin lineup after being sidelined for several weeks with a broken bone in his ankle. This is his only, his only his second game back. It's Burns with Parisi and Goldsworthy for Minnesota. Here's Burns in the corner. Shoots it around on the board. Dallas Smith getting it. Passed it to Cashman. Broken up by Reed. Reed shot it to the corner. Now Goldsworthy fighting for it. It's Cashman along the board, trying to get it out of there. 
And he does get it to center. Parisi for Minnesota, number 11. Pass to Goldsworthy, who shoots it into the Bruins zone. Orr and Burns back to get it. Orr beats him through it, passes to Hodge. Hodge back of the net to Dallas Smith, number 20. Out to Esposito, now to Cashman. Cashman moving across the line. Holds on to the puck, gets it to Hodge, the shot wide of the net. Now Esposito, checked by Parisi. Parisi moving out of his own end of the rink to Charlie Burns, number nine. Now to Goldsworthy. Goldsworthy, a shot went right through the goal mount. Hodge for Boston. Shoots it to center and Tom Reed, number 20, hustles back for Minnesota. To Goldsworthy. Number eight, Bill Goldsworthy gives it to Bones. Bones being four checked by Wayne Cashman. On the left wing boards, it's Burns. Flipping it out to Parisi, who comes to center. Parisi down with Goldsworthy. Burns trailing. Parisi with the puck, lets the shot go. Cheever's got a stick on it. Reed for the North Stars into Burns. Back to Tom Reed. Reed closing in a shot. And Cheevers makes the save and held on to the loose puck for a faceoff. 11 minutes and 19 seconds to go here in the first period of Boston. There is no score. Minnesota North Stars and the Boston Bruins will have the scores of last night's games and some good action shots as well, not only from the game last night, Chicago game, but also from Friday night, the critical game with the St. Louis Blues. St. Louis and California, Friday night tied 2 all in a fine hockey game before a sellout crowd up in Oakland. Puck comes to center ice, it's Ken Hodge, number eight, giving it to Orr. Orr at center ice, in across the line. Holds on to the puck to Cashman, now to Orr. Centered it and Bones breaks it up. Bones turns to get away from Phil Esposito. To Goldsworthy, Bill Goldsworthy, lost it to Cashman. Now Esposito, stick handling outside the blue line. Lost it, gets it back again. Pass to Bobby Orr. Orr to Dallas Smith. Back to Orr, and Bones just broke it up for Mr. Orr. What about a breakaway? Puck at the Minnesota line, Reed giving it to Bill Goldsworthy, number eight. He passes to Moe. Now to Goldsworthy. Goldsworthy lets a hard shot go. Cheevers to say. Racing in to get it was Hanson. Now Hanson does have it, but Orr beat him to the loose puck. Back comes Orr for Boston. A four-man rush to center. Orr drops it to Esposito. Esposito holding on to that puck as he does so well. A shot and it's blocked at the defense. And Goldsworthy starts back for Minnesota. Goldsworthy drop pass to Hanson to Parisi and he shot at one. Back of the net, Orr gets the puck. Bruins nothing, the North Stars nothing. Orr to Smith. Smith shoots it into the Minnesota zone and Barry Gibbs takes it. Gibbs checked by Esposito. Now Gibbs gets it back again. Barry Gibbs in a three-man rush ahead to Prentice on left wing. He tries to work it in front. Back to Harris, a shot. And a good save by Cheevers. Then Nanny centered it. Hextall, a shot. And the next was empty, but Don Orr, stopped him. And the Bruins have a three-on-two break. Music tried to set up Hodge, and it was tipped away. And back comes Hextall, a two-on-one break for Minnesota with only Orr back. Hextall to Prentice. Prentice to shot. The shot. Cheever stops that one and Badnay comes up with the rebound. Out to McKenzie. He got it outside the line and Hextall has it. Don Ori has played the part of the goaltender twice to make key stops here in the last minute. Once with the net wide empty and Ori gets a good hand as he has the puck back to the Bruin goal. To Stanfield. Stanfield fakes the shot and Nanny poke checked him. Blue Nanny now to Hextall, number 22. He's not spinning by McKenzie. And Stanfield starts back for the Bruins, number 17. Hard shot. McKenzie a shot. John McKenzie picks the corner after the shot. And this to that bounced right out to McKenzie. He couldn't have got it any finer than that. It hit the post. Just on the inside, here's McKenzie's shot again. Worsley gives him an awfully wide side. Just inside the post, and Karam's inside. Boston one, Minnesota nothing. Worsley gave him a pretty open side. And for John McKenzie, goal number 20 of the season. The shot by Stanfield was wide of the net, came off the boards right out to McKenzie, who was in full flight. And that makes it one to nothing for the Bruins. Hextall, former Minnesota, shoots it into the Boston zone, and Badnay is back again. 
Badney to Stanfield, back to Badney to Stanfield again. At center ice for the long shot, Worsley flips it off to Dean Prentice. Prentice gets away from McKenzie, headbands the puck to Hextall. Hextall with a long shot, wide of the Boston goal. Here's Lou Nanny dumping it in behind the net. Badney comes up with it. Carl Badney out to McKenzie on right wing. Here comes John McKenzie to Stanfield, and he's poke-checked at the Minnesota blue line. Hextall to Lou Nanny, number 23. Nanny in across the line, and Prentice has gone in ahead of the play over on left wing. That was a pretty shot by Johnny McKenzie to put the Boston Bruins away. Here he is now, right up on top of it. Look at the room to Worthy's right side. And he never could go. He was looking to his left, and McKenzie picked the spot just beautifully. That applause is for Don Ory as he skates to the Bruin bench. He made two key stops playing the part of the goaltender. McKenzie with his 20th goal becomes the eighth Bruin player to reach that plateau this season. There's a shooting score, Tom Reed. A shot from the point that came through a maze of players and may have been deflected in. Looked like it came off Bobby Orr's stick, Dan. And it comes with startling suddenness. There's Bobby, the left-hand side, backing in. 20. There comes the pass now from the blue line, the shot. And I believe it's off Bobby Orr's stick. Just off the left side of Cheever's. Could have hit Dallas Smith, who was in the line of fire, too. It wasn't that hard a shot. But it was deflected. And it got behind Cheever's, and that ties it at 1-1. Now Tom Reed, number 20. Shoots it to center ice, and Dallas Smith gets it to Sanderson, number 16. Sanderson to Westfall, but it's offside at the Minnesota Blue Line. So the North Stars bounce right back to tie it at 1-1 on a rather weak shot. But it changed directions, and fool Cheevers. As a matter of fact, I don't know if Cheevers saw that pocket goal the last second because there was traffic in his line of fire. Reed gets the goal. Unassisted. Here's Gold for the shot. Cheevers near that to the corner. Oliver overskated it, and Sanderson has it for ball. Derek Sanderson tried to get it out. Danny Grant clearing it back in, and it's Smith with the puck to Bobby Orr. Here comes Orr to his own blue line. Hill has it as he comes to center. Shoots it off the boards into the Minnesota zone. And Reed, number 20, is back together. To Doug Bones. Now to Danny Grant. Grant lost it, and Sanderson has it for Boston. Flipping it ahead to Walton. The puck into the North Star zone. Walton in there after it. Gets away from Grant. But Nevin, back-checking, broke it up and clears it out at center ice. Oliver couldn't get it, and Orr takes over for the Bruins. To Dallas Smith. Smith out to Walton. Long right wing pass to Westfall, moving in with a quick wrist shot wide of the net. Bounces along the board. Walton comes up with it. He and Nevin fight for it. Now it goes to Tom Reed. Reed, who scored the Minnesota goal ahead to Danny Grant with a hard shot. Beaver stops that. Now Nevin. Shot hit. Smith and Sanderson takes over for Boston, number 16. Leaves it for Orr. Or out at center ice to Walton, out to Sanderson, across the line, drop pass to Walton, in front to Sanderson, and Worsley kicked it out with his left pass. J.P. Parisi to Harris. And Harris lets the shot go. Smith blocked that. Cheevers tried to poke it away. Burns gets it, centers it back, no one in position, and the puck comes all the way back to the Minnesota blue line. Harris lost the puck. Go to Desposito, and Parisi has it for Minnesota. J.P. Parisi to Goldsworthy, off his stick into the Bruins zone, and Cashman gets it. Wayne Cashman to Bobby Orr, Orr gets it to Ken Haas. Haas to Cashman, Harris breaks that rush up and gives it to veteran Charlie Burns, number nine. Back to Barry Gibbs. Gibbs shot at the center, it's Haas breaking it up to Esposito with Cashman. The shot, and Esposito shot it wide. Going to be a penalty to Minnesota. Play is called. Holding penalty against the North Stars. The action has stopped with five minutes, 20 seconds. Number four, seconds Minnesota. Two period. minutes for holding. Let's pause for a moment. Tom Seaver doesn't wear the traveler knit suit from Sears when he works, but he could. 
It's a great looking style for an owl suit with a stretch fabric that keeps him feeling comfortable and looking fine because knits shake the wrinkles right out. The Traveler Knit Suit. You won't want to wear it all the time, but you could. The Traveler Knit Suit and all that goes with it at Sears, the men's store. So the Boston Bruins with Ted Harris in the penalty box for holding have the power play on. Here's Mike Walton at the point to John McKenzie. The Bruins have the best power play in the league production-wise. 68 goals so far. Or try to hold it in. Gets it to Esposito to Walton. Walton into the corner to Busick. And it's broken up by Hampton who's out with Greg Cameron to kill the penalty. And they puck is cleared down the ice. The Bruins have scored 68 power play goals. Tops in the National Hockey League. And Esposito leads the power play parade with 25 of them. Here he comes to center ice. Esposito with a long shot wide of the net. Hampton back to pick it up. Hampton to 28, Craig Cameron. He's checked. Now McKenzie to Fusick. Reed intercepts the pass and clears it down the ice. And the Bruins again go back. Esposito has 25 of the power play goals. Fusick has 12 and Orr 11. Here comes Orr. Into the Minnesota zone, leaves it for Busick. Busick into Esposito, he scores! Bill Esposito gets goal number 60 of the season and makes it two to nothing. A power play goal by Esposito. Makes it two to one, I should say. Here's Orr, he drops the pass. Busick into Esposito who was in all alone, and he picked that same corner, the bottom right-hand corner, just inside the post to make it 2-1. to one. And for Phil Esposito, his 60th goal of the year. And his 26th power play goal, which is the National Hockey League record. Four power play goals in one season by one player, Phil Esposito. He had the old record of 25. Esposito set the record last year with 25. He breaks it here today. And it's 2-1. to one. Daly for Boston back to his own line to Vadney. Vadney now to Stanfield at center. Stanfield across the line with Daly and Marcotte. He can't center it. And Gibbs knocks it down for Minnesota. Barry Gibbs. Past the nanny was off the mark. Goes down into the ruined zone. Vadney is back to touch it in the... Minnesota North Stars are called for icing. The scoring play, Phil Esposito from Busick and Orr at 15-32. And it was a power play goal. The assist for Orr moves him into a tie for second place in the scoring race in the NHL with Jean Rattel. Now it's Don Ory shooting it in behind the Minnesota goal. Bailey number 14 and Gibbs fight for it. Nextel comes in to help out his teammate for Minnesota and shoots the puck down into the Boston zone. Carol Badney number 10 is back together. The Bruins two, the North Stars one. Badney gives the puck to Stanfield. He's out on the forward line with Marcotte and Bailey. Now Ory to Stanfield at center. Stanfield shoots it into the Minnesota zone and Gibbs is back together. Barry Gibbs being checked by Bailey. Marcotte tried to hold it in. It goes to Dean Prentice. Prentice to Nanny. Lou Nanny into the Bruins zone. Bumped by Bailey. Then by Ori. And Bailey has the puck. Passing it out to Vadney who comes to the center. Vadney shooting it into the Minnesota zone. Racing into Marcotte. Tries to center it. He does. And Hexel cleared it but not out. Ori a shot. That's wide of the Minnesota goal. And Barry Gibbs has it for the North Stars. Gibbs on left wing to Hextall. Hextall into the corner. Bumped along the boards by Vadney. Don Ori has the puck. Trying to get it out. Harris held it in. His shot blocked by Ori. And Ori cuts back of his own goal and starts out of his end of the rink for the Bruins. Ori skating really well after an early season broken ankle. Shoots the puck into the Minnesota zone. Gibbs has it. Out on left wing to Dean Prentice. Prentice for Minnesota. Lead pass for Hextall. 
too far. Goes all the way down the ice. There'd be no icing as they rule that the Bruins could have played it. Now Dallas Smith shot at the center. Murray Oliver to Ted Harris. Harris to Nevin. Nevin to Danny Grant. Grant back to Nevin. Tried to work it in front. Badney took it away from him. Badney tried to shoot it out. Harris held it in. Now Mark caught near the blue line. Checked by Harris over to Nevin on right wing. Bob Nevin taken out of the play by Smith. And Mike Walton has it for the Bruins. Walton to Stanfield. Back to Walton. To Stanfield again. Moving in. And Worsley dove out and poked it off Stanfield's stick. Good play by Worsley. He, he does that often. He's very good with his goal. Now Walton has shot. Worsley stops it on the short side. And Ted Harris passes it out to Oliver. Oliver, number 10. Drop pass to Grant. Grant into Nevin. A shot. And Cheevers covered the post and made the save. And Orr takes the rebound. A minute 23 left in the period. Mike Walton, at least Anderson, takes Walton's pass. A long shot high off the glass. Puck into the corner. Reed and Walton and Sanderson jam up there and hold it and we'll have a face-off in the Minnesota zone. The action has stopped with one minute, 11 seconds left in the first period. Let's pause for a moment. Hey, how did you swing another new Pontiac? Another new Catalina, Wilson. Feels good. But does it ride nice? It's a wide track, Wilson. Now you know how well they ride. Hey, look out! Whoop. Catalina's new front bumper system is designed to help protect it. The high trade-in I got on my last Catalina helped make it all possible. Wilson, money isn't everything. Face off at the Minnesota line. The Bruins lead the North Stars 2-1. to one, And Doug Moans passes to Tom Reed. Out to Bob Nevin. Nevin, a lead pass to Grant. Grant by Bobby Orr. And here comes Walton with less than a minute to play. Walton with Sanderson. Walton tried to flip it in front of the net. Gets it again, but Tom Reed knocks it down and passes to Oliver to Danny Grant. Grant couldn't get around Orr. Oliver gets it. Passes to Nevin off his shade and... Smith tried to shoot it out and fell in by Reed. Walton stepped into him, and here's Derek Sanderson. Lost the puck, and Nevin shoots it to the Bruin line. Walton back to get it. Mike Walton to Bobby Orr. Orr to the Minnesota line, bumped by Reed. Reed goes down, but the play was offside anyway at the Minnesota blue line. Well, Phil Esposito gets his 60th goal of the season here today. He's having another... Tremendous year. Last year, of course, shattered the goal record for a single season with 76. And comes right back and at this point has 60. There he is. Esposito. Leading the National Hockey League scoring race now with 124 points. Puck comes to Parisi for Minnesota. Moving in. Trying to pass it to goal for the shot. Smith blocked that. And Smith passes to Esposito. He lets Hodge take it. Now Esposito picks it up. Into Cashman. Cashman on left wing. Dumped it in front. Burns knocks it down. Couldn't get it out. Hodge has shot his block. And Burns gets it for Minnesota with two seconds left. Comes to center. And the siren goes just as Burns shot the puck. The Cheevers deflected wide of the net. That's the end of the first period with the score. The Boston Bruins 2 and the Minnesota North Stars 1. The North Stars make a last-minute switch and send out Murray Oliver at center with Bob Nevin on right wing, Danny Grant on left wing. Referee Bill Friday drops the puck in the second period. It's underway. Tom Reed at the Minnesota blue line over to Doug Moan. Moan shooting it out to Grant. He's checked at Orr. Has it. Orr to Westfall ahead to Sanderson. Derek Sanderson lets the shot go. Caught by Worsley. Flipped off to the corner. Moan gets it. Trying to shoot it out. Sanderson intercepted it. Dumped it in front to Westfall. He couldn't get the shot away as Reed tied him up. And Tom Reed is going to get a penalty. And the North Stars will be a man short. Reed going to the penalty box. 20 minutes, so to two minutes for hooking. Hooking penalty, and 
There's the definition of hooking as Westfall was stopped by the hooking of Reed, couldn't get the shot on goal. And Tom Reed is in the penalty box. Penalty comes after only 22 seconds of the second period. And of course, the Bruins scored a power play goal in the first period. They're 69th of the year. And Esposito's 26th individual power play goal, which is the National League record. Here's Orr to Esposito again in front of the net. Dumps it to John Busek. And the Bruin power play pays off in a hurry. What a play by Esposito out in front to set up Johnny Busek. Phil simply hung with that puck. Did a beautiful job of hanging on to it despite the fact he's barely under control. Look at this. Backhand, forehand, and being knocked down gets it to Johnny Busek. Fine job by Espo. Here he is. Perfect control here. Saw Busick pass to him as he was being knocked down, and Busick had nothing but net. For Johnny Busick, his 29th goal of the year, and it's 3 to 1 for the Brewers. Back on the for Minnesota. To Grant. He shoots it in behind the Bruins goal, and Orr has it. Orr couldn't get it out. Here's Nevin. Devin and Orr fight for it. Orr also got an assist on the goal with Esposito. He fed it from the right point to Esposito. Now Gibbs trying to hold it in, but Smith carries back for the Bruins to center. They lead 3-1. Smith trying to go around Harris. Dumped it right in front of the net. No one was there, and Nevin shoots the puck outside the blue line. Orr has it for Boston. To Sanderson. Derek Sanderson, number 16. Shooting it to center ice. Nevin has it. Gives it to Murray Oliver. Oliver with a low shot right along the ice, and Sheba stops that. Smith for the Bruins out on right wing to Westfall. Ed Westfall, a long left wing pass to Walton, who's in the clear. In on goal, a shot. Worsley slid out and made the save. Going to be another penalty to Minnesota. And another hooking penalty coming up against the North Stars. And the Bruins power play will go to work again. Number two, two minutes for hooking. Barry Gibbs going off for hooking. The action has stopped with 18 minutes, 31 seconds left in the second period. Let's pause for a moment. Once upon a time, a long time ago, two musicians drove down to buy some spark plugs. So being a good mechanic, and fearing for my life, I put in Autolite Power Tip spark plugs. You see, Autolite wants its spark plugs to be the very best. So they make their power tip plugs with solid nickel chrome electrodes to make them last and last. Be a long time before I see those two again, because Autolite spark plugs last and last and last and last. Face off will be inside the Minnesota line. Barry Gibbs in the penalty box, and the Bruins with a 3-1 to one lead have the power play on again. And they've scored the last two times they've had the man at Maddox. McKenzie giving the puck to Mike Walton. Walton out on left wing to Busick. Busick to Esposito off his stick, and Moon shoots it back to center. Busick picks it up again, carries into the Minnesota zone, drops it to Orr. Here's Orr over to Mike Walton. Walton on that left point, lets the shot go. Worsley got a stick on it. And Oliver for Minnesota shoots the puck down the ice. Oliver and Nevin are out as penalty killers with Moans and Reed on defense. The Bruin power play coming out to center ice is Bobby Orr. Orr stops to make a play, gives it to Walton. Walton in around on the boards to Busick. Busick in the corner. Back to Orr again. Orr fakes the shot, gives it to McKenzie. John McKenzie trying to center it and it was intercepted by Reed who shoots it down the ice. Orr and Walton are point men on the Bruin power play. It's Esposito with Busick and McKenzie up front. And Orr carries the puck to center, lets a long shot go. Worsley stops that, and Bob Nevin has it for Minnesota, number 17. Picks an opening and clears the puck down the ice again. Cheevers leaves it at the side of the net for Orr. 40 seconds left in the Minnesota penalty. Orr to Esposito. Back to Orr. Now to Esposito again. Moving it in. Music has it. Lost it to Oliver. And Oliver clears the puck down the ice. And again, Orr goes back to get it. He watched by Burns. Orr moves it. 
holds on to the puck. He fakes the pass, now gives it to Walton. 13 seconds left in the penalty. Walton across the line, a shot, and Worsley made the save and held on to it after a good move by Mike Walton as he moved into the Minnesota zone. We pause now, five seconds for station identification. WCBS-TV, New York. 16 minutes, 39 seconds left in the second period. Eight seconds remaining in the penalty to Barry Gibbs. The Bruins lead the North Stars 3-1. Stanfield gets the draw back to the Bruins blue line as Corey had to go back for it. He gives it to Stanfield. Stanfield turns to get away from Burns. Now Gibbs steps back. So Minnesota's at full strength. Stanfield takes the shot, gives it to Bailey. Now to Orr and Orr. Took that puck outside the blue line and then carried it back in. That's called on an offside at the Minnesota blue line. We're watching Jerry Cheevers in action here today, Jim, and you're going to have the pleasure of talking to Mrs. Jerry Cheevers at the end of this period. See what she says about the home life of Jerry and how she feels watching on action, Dan. Here's Barry Gibbs. Gives the puck to Ted Harris. Harris into Burns, and it's offside at the Bruin blue line. I think we've passed the Bailey back to Orrick. He comes to center with a long shot goal. Worsley stopped that, and J.P. Parisi, number 11, has it for the North Stars. Now a pass to Barry Gibbs. Gibbs tried to set up Parisi. Marcotte intercepts and shoots it back into the Minnesota zone, and Ted Harris is back to get it for the North Stars. He's the Minnesota captain to Goldsworthy. Goldsworthy trying to get away from Marcotte was checked and Burns has it. Burns moving it across the line. Lost it. Parisi gets it again. Parisi back to Harris. Now to Gibbs, number two. Barry Gibbs. Long bouncing shot. Cheevers makes the save and held on to it. And we'll have a face-off in the Boston zone. Jude Drew out of the North Star lineup. He is the center on the line that is on the ice now with Parisi and Goldsworthy. And Charlie Burns is filling in for Drew, who's the North Star leading scorer with 55 points, 13 goals, and 42 assists. A fine playmaker. But they're without Drew today. Burns clears the puck back into his own zone and goes back to get it himself. Burns overskates it. Marcotte steals it. Mettered at the Vadna. He couldn't get a shot. Now Bailey has it. Garnet Bailey to Stanfield, and he deflected it just wide. Goldsworthy for Minnesota. Couldn't get it out. Marcotte into the corner to Stanfield. Stanfield centering it. Worsley knocked it away, and Goldsworthy has it again. Comes to his own blue line. Now to center us. Goldsworthy gives it to Burns. Burns along the boards. Tried to flip it into the corner, but Ori intercepts for Boston. Over now to Vadna. Vadna ahead to Stanfield. He tries to go around Dennis O'Brien, who knocks it down. O'Brien, the young North Star defenseman, is in front of the play. Now it's Bailey stealing the puck. Almost scored from behind the net as it hit Worsley. Now Westfall for the Bruins to Bailey behind the net. Dumps it in front and Gibbs clears it. Barry Gibbs for Minnesota. Gets the puck to center ice and Bad Day has it for the Bruins. Over to John Ory. And to Bailey. Bailey bumps and knocked down by Barry Gibbs. Gibbs ahead to goals for the end center. Bill Goldsworthy, number eight. Goes on to the puck, gets it to Burns. Back to Goldsworthy. Goldsworthy on the point to Dennis O'Brien. Shooting, and Cheevers makes the save and clears the rebound before Burns could get it. Tom Reed at the point. Puck came outside the blue line, and Reed carried it back in, and it's called on an offside. Nice save by Cheevers, who bodied that puck away from the net. He took a pull on the chest, and it was tough to follow on the way in. It looked like he was partially screened on it. 13 minutes and 56 seconds remaining in the second period. Boston 3, Minnesota North Stars 1 to face off in the neutral zone. Sanderson out with Westfall and Walton for the Bruins. Smith and Orr on defense. It's Hextall, Prentice, and Nanny for Minnesota with O'Brien and Reed on defense. Here's Prentice to O'Brien. Now to Hextall, who poked it into the Boston zone, and Westfall has it. Ed Westfall, number 18. Lead pass to Walton. Reed breaks that up. Now Nanny knocked down by Westfall, who's going to get a penalty. The lead penalty coming up against the Bruins. Orr gets the puck. Play is called, and we have a holding penalty. 
called against the Bruins. The action has stopped with 18, 13 minutes, minutes 36, 36 seconds left in the second period. Let's pause for a moment. Ed? Hey, Bernie! Look, my battery's dead, and I was wondering if you could if you could give me a joke. No, oh, sure, I understand. And my battery went dead, and... Yeah, I understand. I understand. The Sears Die Hard. It's a great deal more dependable than some of your very best friends. I understand. The Die Hard. Sold only at Sears. The East African Safari. Over 3,000 torturous miles with rocks, rivers, and rainforests. This car won a first in class on passenger car tires. Sears steel belted radials, combining proven radial design and two flexible steel belts under the tread. The same kind of tires we've driven over 70,000 highway miles. The mileage you get depends on how you drive. Sears steel belted radial, the proven radial, only at Sears. All set for the Minnesota power play. West ball in the penalty box for Holden. North Stars trail three to one. Here's ball and Sanderson a little over anxious on the faceoff but are chased out of there. Sanderson had some words with lines from John D'Amico. So now it's Orr against Prentice. Prentice gets the draw to Bones a shot and that's the flex wide. Mark Cox for the Bruins trying to get it out of there. And he steals it. Here's Lou Nanny at the side of the net. Nanny trying to work it in front. Can't. Sanderson gets it to Orr. And here comes Orr with Marcotte. Orr leaves it for Marcotte. Marcotte now dropping it back all the way into the zone. Zone. Cheevers comes out of the net to get it. Bruins killing time in this penalty. Out of Dallas. Prentice ties him up. And they hold it there. We'll have a faceoff in the Bruins zone with a minute and a half left in the penalty to Westfall. 3-1 to one for the Bruins, and their power play has been the difference. They have scored two goals with the man advantage. The North Stars could get back into the game by doing the same here. Hextall got the draw. He has fist fight for it. Now Nanny at the point into Prentice. Prentice the shot. And then Hextall went flying over top of Cheevers. But Cheevers held on to the puck. As you watch this game, and particularly during the power play by Minnesota, watch what a thoroughly physical team Boston is all the time. Even when they're a man down here, they're playing the man and playing a very tough, it costs to get in their territory. That Orr is as dangerous a man short as they are at even strength. He has four rooms of pitch. Here's Bones into the corner to Hextall. Hextall back of the net trying to center it. It is centered, but Marcotte breaks it up for the Bruins. Don Marcotte, number 21. Giving it to Smith. Smith moves in. On the board, checked by Lou Nanny. And he drops it back to Goldworthy, number eight. Over on left wing to Dean Prentice. Prentice checks in the play, and the puck comes up by the blue line to Smith. He feeds it back to Orr. 50 seconds left in the penalty as the Bruins control the puck and kill off valuable time in this penalty. Orr. Still holding the puck, being watched by Hextall, passes to Marcotte, he couldn't get it out, here's Goldsworthy, check, and Dallas Smith comes out of his own zone with Orr, lets Orr take it at center, Orr moving in with a shot, wide of the net, Worsley jumped it in behind, Orr almost stole it, and here comes Nick, a pass out of Prentice to center, it is not going to move, he was checked, loose it over there to corner, Bobby Orr shoots it on the ice, the North Stars have to go back with 12 seconds left in the penalty door. Gets a great hand from this capacity crowd at the Boston Garden. Here comes Gibbs. Passes it to Grant and got the deflect one. Now Sanderson clearing it just as Westfall steps back on the ice. So the Bruins are at full strength in their call for icing. Faceoff will be back in the Boston zone. The action has stopped with 11 minutes, 29 seconds left in the second period. Let's pause for a moment. Come out ahead on the Kawasaki, oh, ahead on the Kawasaki, out ahead on the Kawasaki, you come out ahead.
underway as Oliver lets the shot go. Deaver stops. Yes. Tito coming at the bad day back of his own goal. Three one. Now to Don Ory. Ory being watched by Nevin. Now Oliver's after him. Ory passes it out to Cashman. Off his stick and Gibbs has it at center for Minnesota. Pass to O'Brien. Dennis O'Brien with a long shot wide of the Bruin goal. Don Ory back to get it. Oliver in four seconds. Trying to knock Ory off the puck. Ory gets it out to Ken Hodge. Hodge to pass to Esposito who comes to center with Cashman. Esposito is shot. And that was in the goal post. Puck loose back of that net. Esposito trying to center it. Gibbs comes up with the puck. Gibbs passes it out to Oliver. Now to Bob Nevis. Back to Oliver. This pass to Danny Grant. Goes all the way down the ice. Ory back for the Bruins. Touches it. And the North Stars are called for icing. You heard the hand for Bobby Orr as he came down ice. He came all the way from one end in complete control of the puck. Comes down here after giving it up. Takes it back again. And with nothing but green jerseys around him, it seems. Look at the control he's got. Just a beautiful skating athlete. And he skated off to final applause. 10-24 left in the second period. The Bruins leading Minnesota 3-1 from the faceoff. Orr and drive. Save and goes to his knees and hard. It's given a rough ride by O'Brien. Now Esposito pushes it. Dennis O'Brien. Cashman comes into it. Everyone's starting to push his job. Dennis O'Brien is in the middle of it. A lot of pushing and shoving. And we're going to have penalties. Linesman still trying to yes. get Dennis O'Brien away from Esposito. What? I can't hear you, Ma. He's a young defenseman with the Minnesota club. A couple of years ago in the Central League, he had an awful lot of penalty minutes. So he likes the rough going. And Dennis O'Brien going to the penalty box. Bruins are getting a Number penalty too bad day going over to the penalty Two box. Two minutes each for roughing. The action has stopped with 10 minutes, 20 seconds left in the second period. Let's pause for a moment. I'm Joe Garagiola, along with hockey great Bobby Hall. We'll demonstrate the stay moist power of Rapid Shave. Here's Bobby lathered up. Now watch him in action, while Rapid Shave's exclusive blend of deep wetting agents holds in moisture. Hey, you really move it, Bobby. How's the Rapid Shave? Still moist, Joe. Sure is. For a really moist shave, get Rapid Shave. Regular lime or menthol mint. It stays moist all shave long. Each team a man short. Bad day of the Bruins and O'Brien of Minnesota in the penalty box for roughing. Dallas Smith the shot. Worsley the save and he grabs the rebound again and holds on. And we'll have another faceoff in the Minnesota zone. Every time you look up on a play like this, whether it's a power play or just a face-off with Esposito on the ice, he's in that slot. He's out in front of the goaltender all the time. Esposito from the face-off gets the draw, works it in behind the net, holding on to the puck, centered it, and Burns intercepts for Minnesota. Charlie Burns as Reed and Parisi collided in their own zone for Minnesota, and Burns holds on to the puck. Now gives it to Reed. Reed out to Parisi. Parisi to Burns. Burns squeezes the play by the defense. Parisi into the corner. Burns up there. Comes through to Tom Reed has it. Reed with a shot. The puck swings on four. And Orr picks it over to his own zone for Boston and passes to Smith. Smith at center ice. Giving it to Phil Esposito. Burns couldn't get it. It goes to Tom Reed. Reed now to Parisi on left wing. He works his way to center ice. They check by Esposito and goes back to the zone blue line. Esposito feels the puck, races in after it and gets it. Here's Esposito with that long reach of his. Back to Smith now to Orr and drive. And it was blocked in front of the net. Puck still loose. Reed trying to get it out and he does. As Orr just failed to hold it in. And now Orr is back to the zone blue line. And here comes Mr. Orr on the right wing looking to fly. Orr with that great speed, still has the puck, gives it to Cashman, Cashman, in front to Esposito, here's Cashman to Esposito, Bill Esposito, set up beautifully by Bobby Orr and Wayne Cashman.
Minnesota never really did recover from Esposito's one-man foray that time. The North Stars never got untracked again after Phil Esposito forced the play. Here's Cashman, number 12, with the puck. Esposito in that slot we talked about before. Cashman gets one shot. Worsley get a stick to it. He's down on the ice, and the net is wide open. But it was Esposito a good minute before that really set this thing up. Watch Esposito now, right out in front, just waiting. This is his place. He lives here, right outside that front porch. Just waiting, making his moves, giving his man the soft leg, rolling off him and scores. Beautiful work. He scores most of his goals from right there. They call that the slot. And he is ever so dangerous as he takes that position in the slot. Or is Cashman getting assists, or, of course, started the play as he just flew in on that right wing, carried the puck right around the net, and set up Cashman, who then gave it to Esposito, and Esposito gets his 61st goal of the year, and it makes it 4-1 to one for the Bruins. And Orr has three assists. Now it's Lou Nanny, number 23, at center ice. Long shot. Cheever got that. Tries to clear it. He does. It goes to John McKenzie. McKenzie giving it to Don Ory. Now to Stanfield. Fred Stanfield, number 17, lost it. Smith picks it up. Giving it to Stanfield again to McKenzie. Oh! Oh, a shot! And Worsley made a great save on Smith. Now the North Stars come back as Vagney and O'Brien come onto the ice. Tucked into the... Minnesota on the board. Dennis O'Brien has it. And they hold it there. We'll have a face-off in the Minnesota zone to the left of Gump Worsley with 8.06 left in the second period. 4-1 to one for the Bruins. Didn't look like that two minutes in the penalty box cooled down O'Brien any at all. He was still looking for bodies when he came back out on the ice. Fairly tough collision on the backboard. 8.06 to go, a 4-1 game Boston second period. The face-off in Minnesota's end. Danfield with McKenzie and Busick for the Bruins against Textile, Nanny, and Prentice for Minnesota. As John McKenzie and Stanfield talk things over. Now they're ready. Stanfield gets the draw. McKenzie trying to get it in front. It goes to Busick with a shot. Gibbs blocked that, and Worsley passes it to Nanny on right wing. Loop to Hextall. Hextall shooting it in for Nanny in the corner. Loop. Hard by Vadney gets away from the check. Tried to jump it in front. Bad day. Along the boards. Right for it with Danny. Hextall goes over and they hold it there. And we'll have a face-off in the Bruins zone. Play this game. you got to be tough. The next CBS golf special will be in April. The famed Masters Tournament. First of the four major golf championships. Coverage starts Friday, April 7th with a 30-minute special, Meet the Masters. Then more live golf action Saturday and Sunday, April 8th and 9th. Now here's Oliver, a shot from the face-off, wide of the net. Music gets it for the Bruins. Cuts back of that goal, Music Out on right wing to McKenzie, back to Music, and he comes to center ahead to Stanfield into the Minnesota zone. Reed and Stanfield back to get it. Reed has it, loses it to McKenzie, who centered. Here's Don Ory shooting, and it hit the side of the net. It's Nevin, number 17 for Minnesota. Lost it to Music. Music and Nevin fight for it on the boards. It goes to Ori. Ori now to Stanfield. Stanfield turning to get away from his check. Gives it to Vadney. Vadney flipping it over to Don Ori. And Ori turns back in his own zone. Back to Vadney. Vadney for the Bruins. Leads the rush to center right. In across the line, stick handling, taken out of the play by O'Brien. Here's McKenzie trying to center it as Badney and O'Brien go back at it in front of that net. And Badney is going to get a high sticking penalty for man handling Dennis O'Brien. And the Bruins will be a man short. Badney is a rough, tough customer. Number 10, two minutes for the high stick. High sticking, you hear Bill Friday, the referee, say he can score goals. He's got 17, but he also has... 120 minutes in penalty, so he likes the rough going as well. Fits in perfectly with this Boston team, Dan. He's the kind of player they like to have, and again, this gives them probably the primest back line in the National Hockey League. They are very, very difficult to get through. Six minutes and 46 seconds to go. 
in the second period, Boston leading by a score of 4-1 and a good chance here for the North Stars to get themselves back in the game. Otherwise, it could be one of those Boston avalanches. They seem to feed on goals and get hungrier and hungrier. They lead 4-1. to one. They're a man short now. Orr has it being watched by Danny Grant. And Orr goes all the way back behind his own net to kill off time in this penalty to Vadne. Orr feeds it out to Westfall. He gives it to Sanderson. Sanderson. Now ahead to Smith on left wing. Dallas Smith. Tries to center it. Knocked down by Moans. Doug Moans gives it to Gibbs. Gibbs ahead to Grant. Grant number 21. Sanderson is skipped away by Smith. Sanderson gets it for the Bruins and picks it opening and shoots at the length of the ice. And Moans goes back to get it with a minute 20 left in the penalty to Badner. Murray Oliver, number 10. Trying to get away from Sanderson who stole it, but Moans covered it. Moans now to Danny Grant, and that's offside. The pass coming from inside the Minnesota blue line to the Boston side of center ice, and the faceoff will be back just inside the North Star line. The Bruins are the biggest team in the National Hockey League. They average 194.9 pounds and average 5 feet 11 and a half inches in height. Faceoff will be just inside the Minnesota line, a minute 10 left of the penalty, and Bobby Orr has the puck for Boston over to Dallas Smith. Smith beating it to Westfall. Westfall back to Sanderson, moves in the shot, and Worsley got his arm on it. Sanderson coming close to scoring shorthanded. Puck comes to center ice. Smith has it for the Bruins, over to Orr. Orr holding on to it, gives it to Sanderson. Sanderson out on left wing to Dallas Smith. Smith in a, on left wing into the corner. Holds on to the puck, feeds it in front to Orr. Orr couldn't get a shot. Now here come the North Stars, goal for the at center. One man back to Burns, and look at Orr come back, and he breaks it up. Orr came back from away behind the play, and now winds up kneeling down on top of the puck to force a faceoff. And you know, from time to time, we have fans... Ask us why we talk so much about Bobby Orr. Well, it's impossible to watch him play a hockey game and not talk about him. And I think you find the opposition coaches in the National Hockey League spend as much time talking about him as we do. Here's Dennis O'Brien, a shot from the point that hits Sanderson. He clears it around behind the net. Orr picks it up. Orr up to Sanderson. Sanderson trying to clear it. It's held in by Burns. Burns centered it. And Smith breaks it up and clears the puck down the ice. Ten seconds left in the penalty to Badney. Dennis O'Brien back to get it. The Bruins leading 4-1 here in the second period. Pass to Burns on right wing. Burns lost it to Sanderson. Now Reed picks it up. Badney's back on. Boston at full strength. Here's Reed to Burns. Burns centered it. Went right through the goal mouth. Board. Pinned there by Burns and Parisi. Badney gets it loose and passes to Sanderson. Goldsworthy tried to hold it in and couldn't. It comes to center. Bill Goldsworthy, number eight. Cross center ice. Moves in with the shot. Beaver's got his left pad on it. Goldsworthy then centered it right across the goal mouth. Here's Pond for Boston. Up to Esposito. And it goes off his six to center ice. O'Brien back to Tom Reed. Reed to O'Brien again. Up in the play by Ken Hodge, and Esposito has it to Cashman in with Hodge. Back to Hodge. It hit the goal post. It hit the goal post. It hit the goal post. As a matter of fact, I think it hit both. The red light did not go on. I was sure it was in. I thought it was in. Here's Cashman to Hodge on the replay. Back to Cashman. There's the shot. Hits the post, bounces over, and hits the other one. Red light did not go on, and it is not a goal. <laughs> now Esposito to Ori. Ori puts it into the corner. Barry Gibbs has the puck. Gibbs trying to clear it out on left wing to Prentice. Dean Prentice to Gibbs. Gibbs at center. 
Moving it across the line, shoots it to the corner. Badney has it for the Bruins. And here comes Badney, a good move. To get away from his man, up to Hodge. Hodge to Cashman. Cashman on left wing, moving in with Esposito, the shot. Worsley, a good stick save. Now Hodge to Esposito, to Cashman again, and Gibbs breaks it up. And that line could really throw the puck around beautifully. Back comes Gibbs with a bouncing shot that took a crazy hop. And Cheevers didn't take any chances and held on to it. Three minutes and 16 seconds left in the second period. Remember at the intermission at the end of this period, you're going to meet a goaltender's wife. Mrs. Jerry Cheevers will be Jim Gordon's guest. Here's Lou Nanny. And Ori falls and falls on top of the puck, and so we'll have another face-off in the Bruins zone. Four to one for the Bruins. A couple of goals by Phil Esposito. John McKenzie and John Busick have the others. And the Minnesota goal was scored by Tom Reed. It was two to one at the end of the first period. The Bruins have scored twice here in the second. There's a quick shot by Nanny to Cheever stop. Nanny has it again. Centered to Hextall, and Cashman has the puck back into his own zone to Ori. Ori now to Badney. Number 10, Carl Badney, stick handling into Esposito. Back to Badney. Badney along the boards. Checked by Harris. Gets it to Cashman. Cashman in that corner. Trying to center it. He did. Back of the net again. And Gibbs. Tied up by Ken Hodge. The puck comes out in front of the net. No one is there. And Prentiss beats it to Hextall. Hextall. Flash by Cashman is going to get a penalty. Now Hextall comes back into the ice and he's been injured. Esposito piles into Cashman and here they go. Cashman now gets up again. And he races in and tries wow. right to get it Hextall. Flashes it. Hextall behind the net. That's and the it. linesmen separate. Dennis Hextall and Wayne Cashman. Cashman was injured, got up again, and went racing in after Hextall. And now Don Ori and Barry Gibbs pair off. Lionsman John D'Amico talking to Cashman. Esposito in front of that net was the first man to race in there after Hextall, and Hextall is going to the penalty box. Cashman in the corner, being restrained by the linesman. So we had a near outbreak of everyone on the ice. Here's how it happened. Cashman slashed at Hextall as the play moved in. He was getting a penalty anyway. And Cashman again slashed at Hextall. And Hextall, as they went over near the boards, high stick, Cashman. Then after that, in front of the net, Esposito raced in, started to push and shove with Hextall. Cashman was injured on the play, and he'll come from the right side of your picture. There he comes, jumping over top to try and slash at Hextall. Seem to hit him on the shoulder. Now, over at the penalty box, back to the live action, we have a disturbance again. As Cashman going to the penalty box had some words with Hextall, who's already in there. And he raises his stick. He's now being restrained by his teammates, Phil Esposito and Badney, as they try and cool down Wayne Cashman. He was really upset. So Cashman and Hextall go to the penalty box. Cashman has two for slashing, two for charging. Hextall has a major for spearing. There you hear it from referee Bill Friday, a double minor against Cashman. Two minutes for slashing. No. Have you two got minutes that? for charging. Get and Hextall gets five minutes. A minor for slashing, a minor for charging. 
and the other guy has five for spirit. And there's Bill Friday again repeating the penalty assessment to the penalty timekeeper. So Hextall gets a five minute major for Spearing. Here's some of the isolated action from the fight earlier. That's Hextall number 22, and that's a spearing penalty as he speared at Cashman. Yeah, that was a bad thing to do. So he's off for spearing. And he gets a five-minute major. There's Jackie Gordon, the Minnesota North Star coach, over behind the bench. Face-off will be in the Bruins zone with two minutes and 29 seconds. Left to go in the second period. Cashman and Hextall are both very rough, tough, aggressive hockey players and we'll have to watch when they get back onto the ice after serving their penalties. Meanwhile, it's 4-1 to one for the Bruins. Esposito has scored two goals, his 60th and 61st of the year. John McKenzie with his 20th and John Busick with his 29th. And Tom Reed has scored the Minnesota goal. His sixth of the season. Face off in the Boston zone. Danfield and Oliver are chased out of there. Now it's going to be Orr against Nevin. Puck is dropped. Puck comes to Danfield. Each team playing a man short. Danfield in the corner. Passes it out to Orr, and here comes Orr with McKenzie to center. The pass to McKenzie, and it was just offside at the Minnesota Blue Line. Bruins have McKenzie and Stanfield up front. Orr and Smith on defense. It's Oliver with Nevin up front for Minnesota. O'Brien and Reed on defense. Here's Orr. Each team a man shorty gives it to Stanfield. Back to Bobby Orr. Over to Smith. Smith dick handles his way away from Oliver. Comes to the blue line. Now to McKenzie at center. McKenzie into Stanfield. Fred Stanfield dropping it to McKenzie. Back to Stanfield in the corner. Bruins working around beautifully at center to McKenzie. He couldn't get a shot. Now McKenzie has it again. Checked by Tom Reed. Stanfield goes into the corner to help out. Gets it to McKenzie. McKenzie then is checked by Nevin. Bob Nevin. Number 17 for Minnesota at center to O'Brien. O'Brien a drop pass to Oliver with a shot. That's blocked. Clear to the corner. McKenzie has it for Boston. John McKenzie out to Orr. It was too far ahead for Orr. And Reed shoots the puck back into the Bruins zone. Dallas Smith, number 20, takes over. Smith at his own blue line. Now to center. Long shot. Stopped by Worsley. Cleared into the corner. And Ted Harris has it. The North Star captain, Harris. At center ice to Burns. Burns down to Goldsworthy, lets the shot go and block. Burns has it again, dumped it in front, and it was cleared away, and Orr starts back for Boston with a minute left in the period. Orr a drop pass to Stanfield. Each team still a man short. Stanfield to Orr. Orr trying to go around Harris. Bobby Orr. Checked by Harris, and Burns gets up with the puck as Harris and Orr. Shoving match. There's a shot that Worsley caught and Gibbs takes over the puck with 40 seconds left. Goldworthy to Harris. Harris headmanning the puck to Burns. Burns the shot deflected. Goes wide of the net. Keepers out of the net. Cleared it. Here's Goldworthy back on the point to Gibbs. Gibbs flips it back to Goldworthy. He couldn't center it. And Dallas Smith tried to shoot it out. Now Gibbs to Ted Harris. Harris moving in the slap shot to flex wide. Centered again, and it's cleared away by Stanfield. To Westfall with 12 seconds left as the Bruins come to center. Westfall tried to go around Harris. He pushed it off the stick. Burns gets up with it. Now Harris and Westfall push it one another. 
And Goldsworthy has it for Minnesota at center to Burns as the siren goes to end the second period. And the linesman, as the players leave the penalty box, immediately got between Cashman and Dennis Sexto. So they must be anticipating future trouble between those two. That's the end of the second period with the score. The Boston Bruins four and the Minnesota North Stars one. In a world that's getting tougher on people, and people who are getting tougher on tires, Firestone brings you the people tire. It is really tough. Maybe you can do enough of the wrong kind of things to this tire to tear it up. Maybe you can find enough curbs to climb, enough chuck holes to drop into, and enough junk to run over to do it in. But it's tough, and it's tough because of the way Firestone builds this tire. Two tough armor belts of steel cord right under the tread. Steel so strong a single cord can pull a car. Our engineers call this tire the Firestone 500 steel belt. We call it the people tire. We're not saying it's a tire you shouldn't take care of. We're saying that with just a little care, it will really take care of you. Like marriage, there's more to the new International Scout II than meets the eye. Inside, it's roomy, with a fold-down seat and comforting options. They're not following us, are they, Archibald? Uh, yeah. On the road, it's smooth driving. But put the Scout in four-wheel drive, and it lets you get away from it all in a hurry. Get them up, Scout! Test drive the new Scout II at your international dealer, and find out how one car can live cheaper than two. My man smokes a pipe, but poor baby. He started smoking papaya peach and smelled like a walking fruit salad. Then he smoked angel's breath, but that burned his tongue like devil's fire. Then he found the right tobacco. Not some fancy foreign stuff, but Carter Hall. He says it tastes cool and smooth and oh, the aroma. Ursula, light my fire. Carter Hall, the pipe tobacco that tastes as good as pipe tobacco smells. We'll return to the Boston Garden after this pause for station identification. Line now to center. Passes it to Nevin. Bob Nevin with a shot wide of the net. Now it's Oliver to Moan. Moan's holding it in, but Sanderson gets it for the Bruins. Derek Sanderson, number 16. To Westfall. Westfall flipping it in front, and Reed breaks it up and starts back for Minnesota with Nevin to center, a two-on-two -two break. Here's Reed stepping around Ori into the corner. Tried to center it. He hit the side of the net. Reed after it again as Westfall ties him up in knots along the boards and they hold it there. And we'll have a face-off off to the right of Jerry Cheevers. Cheevers after his 30th victory or 30th game without a defeat in a row here with the Bruins today. Twenty-two victories and seven ties for Cheevers during that stretch. Here's Burns from the faceoff back on the point to Harris, the shot that hit Esposito. Still Esposito on right wing coming to center right. Now into the Minnesota zone and he's poke checked in the play and Burns, number nine, has it for Minnesota. Burns just picks an opening, clears it down the ice. Cashman's back on, so Minnesota is a man short. 53 seconds left in the penalty against Texel. Here comes Walton across the line, dropping it back to McKenzie. It's broken up, and here's Goldsworthy with only Orr back. Goldsworthy just circles at center, killing time on the penalty to his team. Goldsworthy hangs onto the puck and jumps it all the way back into his own zone to give. Yes, he looks for an opening and shoots it down the ice, and Cheevers steers it into the corner, and Orr, number four, takes it. Moore has three assists, and this man with the puck, Bill Esposito, has two goals and an assist for the Bruins today. Esposito with a long shot, steered in the corner by Worsley. Esposito trying to center it. Gibbs couldn't get it out. It's held in by Orr. Shooting! Worsley got his shoulder on it, and 
it's finally cleared to center. Four for the Bruins. Stops, passes it to Busick on this power play. Busick into McKenzie, and he quits control of the shot. Worsley a save, another shot. Here's Busick shooting. Loose in front, and then Walton cleared it wide. Hextall is back on. Here's Orr shooting. He scores! Bobby Orr on about the fifth try the Bruins had, and that makes it 5-1. to one. Chuck Worsley just wasn't getting any help. He made three or four stops that he shouldn't have been able to make at all. One he never saw. There's a stop. Gets his stick on it here. Can't hold it. Good play on the pass back. On the shot by Johnny Busick here. Then she finally comes back out to Bobby Orr right here. Worsley again making the stop. And Orr had practically an open net. And Worsley almost got back for that. When it was a low drive. Just about a half stride more. He would have had it blocked. Bobby Orr's 34th goal of the season. He now needs only three goals to tie his record for goals by a defenseman. And he holds that, of course. Here's Tom Reed with a long shot. Jeevers blocked it, and Badney has it, giving it to Esposito. Still Esposito moving into the Minnesota zone. Esposito dumped it in front to Cash. Hit the side of the net. Now Goldsworthy for the North Star. Checked by Esposito. Esposito gives it to Ken Hodge. He's checked on the boards by Reed. Now Hodge into the corner to Cashman again. He and Parisi fight for it. Hodge goes in to help out. They get it loose. It comes to Don Ori. He tried to poke it back into the corner. Now Cashman and Burns fight for it on the boards and they hold it there. And Cashman pushes it Burns and Goldsworthy. And we'll have a face-off in the Minnesota zone. The scoring play was Orr from Walton and Busick. Orr's 34th goal of the year and his fourth point today. A goal and three assists. Esposito, as I mentioned, has two goals and assists. Now Hodge and O'Brien fight for the puck. There's going to be a penalty to Hodge as Worsley goes to the bench. Here comes O'Brien out of his own zone, zone to the blue line. Dennis O'Brien to center ice right, into Danny Grant. Grant on the North Star rush, checked by Hodge. Puck is moved in the corner to Burns. Burns trying to work it in front. Checked on the play, and Madney comes up with the puck. Play is called, and Hodge is getting an elbow, is getting an elbowing penalty for the Boston Bruins. The action has stopped with 16 minutes and five seconds left in the third period. Number Let's eight, pause two for minutes a moment. For elbowing. With a rock around assembly, assembly, assembly. With a rock around assembly, we don't like dirt. Detergent gasoline helps keep our engines running smooth and clean. Sure is more below, it's more the gasoline. With a rock around assembly, assembly. Use mobile detergent gasoline. It can help your car's performance. Now the North Star's on the power play. Hextall gets the draw back to Prentice. Prentice to Danny Grant. Over to Nanny at the other point. Nanny is shot. Blocked by Orr. And it's Westfall for the Bruins. Cuts right in front of his own net. Long pass to Sanderson. Has the break. And Nanny hustled back and broke it up. But it was all offside anyway. And the faceoff will come back inside the Boston blue line. 15 minutes and 52 seconds to go in the game. Boston on top by a top-heavy score of 5-1. to one. The Minnesota North Stars are now on a power play with Ken Hodge in the penalty box a minute and 47 seconds to go. The face-off in Boston's end. Sanderson out killing this penalty has seven shorthanded goals. He's dangerous when they're a man short. The record is eight held by Dave Key out of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now here's Danny Grant at the point with a shot. Cheevers to save, and Orr comes up at the rebound and clears it down the ice. Worsley has to stop the long shot. A minute and a half left in the penalty to Hodge. Now it's Nevin trying to move out of his own zone. Smith breaks it up and gives it to Orr. Orr circling back to kill time in this penalty. Passes to Smith. Smith out at center. Westfall couldn't control the pass, and Grant has it for Minnesota. North Stars have five forwards out of this power play. Now Prentice lost it to Sanderson, gets it back again. Clears it to Nanny. Number 23, Lou Nanny. Nanny shooting it into the Bruins zone. Orr 
Knocks it down, feeds it to Westfall at center. Danny Grant hustled back to break it up for the Stars. A pass ahead to Prentice. Prentice for Minnesota into the Boston zone. And Sanderson back checking, breaks it up, clears it around on the boards all the way down the ice. And again, Minnesota has to go back for it. 40 seconds left in the penalty against Ken Haas. Number 21, Danny Grant gives it to Hextall. Here's Hextall. Passing it at center to Prentice. Prentice dropping it back to Grant, a drive, and that's high off the glass. Lau Lunani into the corner to Hextall. He missed it. Orr comes up at the puck. Bobby Orr shooting it over on the boards. Nanny gets it to Goldsworthy. A shot he scores! Bill Goldsworthy let the shot go. Prentice may have deflected it. It's hard to say. Goldsworthy in any event pulled the trigger about as fast as you'll see a man do it. Hit that puck in the fly. Almost equivalent to trying to hit a golf ball as it rolls across the green toward you at top speed. Really fired home. To make it a 5-2 game, still in favor of Boston, of course. 14 minutes and 19 seconds to go on the power play goal by the North Stars. They've got a life for the long time to go. We'll wait for the announcement. Prentice may have tipped that shot by Goldsworthy, it's hard to say. Buck comes to the Bruin line and... Dean Prentice gets the goal and for Prentice, that's his 20th of the year. Now it's Ted Harris shooting it into the center ice area. Knocked down by Badney. Badney gives it to Ori. Don Ori for the Bruins. Long shot from center ice. Worsley controls the rebound and gives it to Ted Harris, number four. Harris trying to get it out. It's held in by Marcotte. Back into the corner and Harris again has it for the North Stars. Pass now to Goldsworthy. Number eight, Bill Goldsworthy. Being watched by Bailey. Goldsworthy. And center ice. Flips the puck into the Bruins zone. Vadney knocks it down. And Garnett East Bailey gets it. Number 14. Dory. Dory back of the net. Being court checked by Burns. Burns comes up on the puck to Ted Harris at the point over to Gibbs. Gibbs moving in. Makes the shot. Still has it. And then lost it to Stanfield who starts back. And here's a two-on-one break to Bailey. In with Stanfield. Pass to Trent, and it's broken up by Harris, who made a good defensive play. Bailey gives it to Madney. Madney has shot, goes to the corner. Now Marcotte for the Bruins. Try to center it. Back of the net, Stanfield lost it and burns for Minnesota to Parisi. J.T. Parisi to Goldsworthy. Goldsworthy in center ice. Lost the puck, and Gibbs has it. Gibbs clears it all the way down the ice. It's on goal. Cheever's Makes the save, and there's no icing because of that. Don Ory, number 26, to Stanfield. Stanfield with Bailey and Marcotte. The pass to Marcotte off his stick into the corner. Worsley cleared it. Ted Harris on the board, trying to get it up. Badney held it in. Spins away from Oliver's check. Now Badney into the corner with some good stick handling, and Ted Harris again for Minnesota, out to Nevin. Nevin, number 17. With Oliver and Grant, the pass to Oliver, back to Grant. Grant into the corner, trying to center it. Way stopped in the corner, and we're going to have a slashing penalty against the Bruins. Don Ory going toward the penalty box, or is he going toward the Bruins bench? No, he's going to the penalty box. Not you. Number we 10, two now, minutes five for slash. seconds for station identification. WCBS TV, New York. The action has stopped with 12 minutes, 10 seconds left in the final period. Let's pause for a moment. Came here yesterday, 2.50, all you can eat. Pate, pickled herring, egg foo young. Who could decide? So I ate everything. Not a little bit of everything. Everything. Don't they have to wheel me out? took two Alka-Seltzers. Alka-Seltzer neutralizes all the acid your stomach has churned out. For your upset stomach... Don Ory was very surprised. He went to the penalty box, but the penalty wasn't against him. It was against Oliver of Minnesota, so Minnesota's a man short. Here comes Orr to center ice. In across the North Star line to McKenzie. The Bruins on the power play. Orr at the point. 
trying to feed it into the corner. Hanson knocked it down, and now Tom Reed has it for Minnesota and shoots the puck the length of the ice. The Bruins lead 5-2 to two here in the third period, and they have the man advantage now as Orr feeds it to John Busick, number nine. Busick shooting it into the North Star zone. Cameron back in the corner against Esposito. Esposito pulls it away from him, but Ted Hanson gets it. And Hampton tried to shoot it up. Busick knocked it down with a high stick up above his shoulders. And the play is called, and the faceoff will be all the way down to the Boston zone. 11 minutes and 33 seconds to go in the third period with a 5-2 game in favor of the Boston Bruins. The North Stars, of course, in second place in the Western Division. Now looking forward to the Stanley Cup playoffs, so they'll have the home ice advantage. And could be a very difficult team. They're well balanced. From the faceoff, the puck in the corner to Orr. Minute 20 left in the penalty as Orr gives it to Esposito. Bill Esposito to his own blue line, now to center. And across the Minnesota line, passing it to Walton. Walton in the corner. Shoots it around to the board to number 19. The Kinsley back of the net to Busick. He missed it, but Walton gets it. Walton back to Busick again. Off his stick, and Orr picks it up. Orr carries the puck into the corner, holds on to it. Or back near the blue line, controlling the puck beautifully. Gives it to Walton. Walton centers to Esposito. He's knocked down. Now Bobby Orr to McKenzie. John McKenzie to Busick. Back to McKenzie to Esposito. And Worsley cleared it away from him. Cameron and Walton play for it in the corner. And the puck comes loose. Busick controlling it. John Busick for Boston. Back to Orr. Or back to that net. Worsley intercepts it. There's music again for the Bruins. The Bruins have had control of that puck and finally lose it as Hanson shoots it down the ice with 18 seconds left in the penalty. Cheever feeds it up to Mike Walton, number 11. Walton to Bobby Orr. Orr leaves it for Phil Esposito. Esposito across that line, checked by Dennis O'Brien. Now the North Stars clear at the center. And they play as whistle down. With one second left in the penalty to Oliver. Bobby Orr, despite this being his sixth year in the National Hockey League, celebrates only his 24th birthday tomorrow. Clearly matures. Twenty-four years old and an all-star and record-breaking defenseman and player in the NHL. Here's Badney to Esposito. Oliver's back on, so Minnesota's at full strength. The long shot. Shot by Worsley. He cleared it around to the board. Esposito trying to center it, and Barry Gibbs has it for Minnesota. Bruins lead 5-2. to two. Gibbs gives it to Ted Harris. Harris at center to Parisi. Parisi trying to work around Cashman. Does, but Don Ori is there to intercept. Ori for the Bruins. Now up to Ken Hodge. Hodge shooting at the center, and Gibbs has it. Gibbs the puck now Esposito has it and he's checked from behind by Gibbs who seals it back. Gibbs then loses it to Hodge and here's Esposito checked by Goldsworthy. Goldsworthy and Ori fight for it on the board. Charlie Burns picking it up for Minnesota. Bumped by Esposito now it's centered to Goldsworthy. Should he score? Goldsworthy and that cuts the Bruin lead to five to three. Same thing he did before when Prentice came up with the goal from about the same position, only the puck came off the backboards. He pulls the string so fast. Number nine has got the puck. Burns now finds Goldsworthy. Look at this. This time he took it on a nice, easy sweep. Good hard wrist shot. Clean in. That makes it 5-3. Nine minutes and 21 seconds on a good play by Burns and the goal by Goldsworthy. And for Goldie, is 29th of the year. He leads the North Stars in goal scoring. Five to three, puck comes to the Minnesota blue line. We have nine minutes, 19 seconds left in the game. Hextall trying to shoot it in, and back to pick it up was bad day, but it was offside at the Bruin blue line. Nine minutes and 14 seconds remain in the game. A 5-3 game, the Boston Bruins. And from here on in, Boston will have to be a little bit careful, not playing quite as aggressively, not quite as loose as they have been. A power play for Minnesota could hurt. Scoring play was Goldsworthy from Burns at 10:39, and it cuts the Bruin lead to five to three. Don Ori back of his own goal for Boston, gives it to Sanderson, back to Ori, out to Vadney number 10, fires it into the corner, 
Worsley jumped it back of the net. Nanny and Sanderson fight for it, and Harris picks it up. Harris for Minnesota, a left wing pass to Dean Prentiss. Prentiss giving it to Hextall at center. Here's Dennis Hextall. Shoots it into the Bruin zone. And Badney is back to pick it up. Badney for the Bruins, number 10. Standing back of his own goal as the Bruins try and move it out of their own end of the rink. Now he gives it to Sanderson. Back to Vadney. Over on left wing to Ori. Off this stick, it goes to center. Nanny has it. He's knocked down by Mark Walton. And Vadney picks up the loose puck. He lost it. Don Ori ahead to Walton. Walton. Comes to the Minnesota line. Gibbs checks him, and back comes Blue Nanny. He lost the puck, and it's Ori giving it to Vadney. Badney, a pass ahead for Rickball, goes down into the Minnesota zone, and Gibbs is back to get it, and the Bruins are called for icing on the play. The action has stopped with eight minutes and one second left in the final period. Let's pause for a moment. Should my boy be a doctor? Or an architect? Or maybe a professor? Whatever he picks... You'll need training. That's where New York Life is helping. This life insurance guarantees my guy will have cash for college. Talk it over with your New York Life agent. It sure makes the future look a lot happier. <laughs> right, Professor? Right. <laughs> minutes and one second left in the game Boston 5 and Minnesota 3 face off in the Bruins zone the puck goes to the corner to Bobby Orr he's being watched by Murray Oliver Orr now moving up with a pass to Sanderson Derek Sanderson number 16 leading the four man rush into the Minnesota zone knocked down by O'Brien Sanderson stick handling while lying flat in his stomach lost the puck to Nevin finally who gives it to Danny Grant Grant out at center to Nevin. Nevin to Oliver on left wing, moving in. Or knocks it off Oliver's stick. Oliver tried to center it again, and Westfall has it for the Bruins. Dumps it back to the goal to Smith. Smith out to Orr. Trying to move around O'Brien. Bobby Orr with one hand on the stick. O'Brien's going to get a penalty. Reed intercepts the pass. Play is called, and... Dennis O'Brien is getting a holding penalty for the way he tied up Bobby Orr. Number five, uh, Minnesota, real bad two play minutes for holding. With 7-12 to go, they're trailing by two. Number five reaches out here, and he's got a pretty good handful of Bobby Orr. Orr still playing the puck as he goes by with a tremendous strength. But there's no doubt about the fact he's being held and held good. Finally breaks loose, but that time the penalty had been called. So, 42-year-old Gump Worsley, younger only by a few months than Jacques Plant of the Toronto Maple Leafs, will face the Bruin power play, and he doesn't like what he has to face, and he tells Bill Friday he didn't like the penalty. Here's McKenzie for Boston, back on the point to Mike Walton. Walton shooting, deflected, Worsley the save. That's the field. Esposito, the toughest man in hockey at that range. And again, Worsley got no help at all. He made the initial stop. There was nobody there to clear it away. He never got back in time. Never really gets himself set here. Esposito had a lot of net and found it. It's the hat trick. Three goals in one game for Esposito. 7.02 to go in the third period. Somebody's tossed the hat out onto the ice. Worsley skating out to clear it away. Goldfrith. Goldfrith has shot. Keepers clears it. It's into the corner. Mark 
caught over skating it. Now it's better to burn. This shot blocked, and Mark Cox clears it to Bailey. It's a break on left wing. Barnett Bailey in on goal. Worsley slides up, makes the save, and Harris cleared the rebound before the Bruins could shoot it into the empty net. And it's Parisi back for Minnesota. A pass to Burns at the side of the net. He tried to center it, and John Ory slid in front of his pass out and covered up on the puck, and we'll have a face-off in the Bruins' zone. Scores down badly here with 6.17 to go. They trail the Boston Bruins by a score of 6-3. to three. Here's Gump Worsley, and you can see again what he thinks about hat tricks. You know, he wouldn't have cared if it was somebody in it. been the difference. They've scored four of them today. Now up 72 for the year, and that's where they lead this game, 6-3. to three. Four of their six goals while they had the man advantage. Buck shot into the Minnesota zone. Worsley getting a real boost from this crowd at the Boston Garden. Now it's Burns to head the goal ready for Minnesota. This shot right through the goal mouth. Parisi number 11, bumped by Stanfield. Badney tying up Parisi along the boards, it's centered and cleared back by Stanfield. Parisi, a good man in those corners, trying to get it out front. Here's Goldsworthy. He lost it, and Bailey has it for the Bruins. Garnet Bailey, number 14. Bruins lead 6 to 3. Bailey to center ice with Marcotte and Stanfield. Bailey around the defense, Burns back checking, shot it to the corner, and O'Brien has it. Dennis O'Brien gets by Marcotte. Worsley and makes it 7 to 3. It's a Boston Avalanche now. Around behind the net. Pulled it away just beautifully. Good four checking. Karen off the skate. Worsley was leaning the wrong way. Here's Worsley. He said. Has it followed fairly well. You can see it change direction as he suddenly makes a move. Right off his skate. Watch it here. Right off his skate. One more time. Watch it. Off the inside of his skate. He never got closed in time. He's protecting the right side. It caught his skate and went in. John Marcotte makes it 7-3 for the Bruins. Here in the third period. Now it's Bobby Orr. To Dallas Smith, number 20. To Sanderson, it's broken up by Gibbs. Gibbs, number two, flipping it into the Bruins zone. Smith is there to get it, tied up by Nanny. Puck loose back of that net. Sanderson over on right wing to Westfall. He couldn't get it out. It's held in by Hextall. Now Orr has it for Boston. Bobby Orr at center ice to Walton. Nanny knocking it down, and Dean Prentice has it, number 29. Prentice. The veteran, left winger, shoots it into the Bruins zone, or back to pick it up, gives it to Sanderson. And here comes Sanderson, a long pass out at center ice to Westfall. Broken up, and Barry Gibbs starts back for Minnesota. He's checked by Sanderson, with Westfall. Pass to Westfall. Moving in, he can't get the shot. Nanny knocks Westfall down, and the puck winds up going up over the glass. And we'll have a face-off in the Minnesota zone. To the right of Gump Worsley. Boy, the Gumper's mad. He's continuing to talk to referee Bill Friday. He didn't like the penalty that Dennis O'Brien received for holding Bobby Orr. Hextall facing off against Sanderson. There's Walton, a shot. Another one, and he shot wrong. As the Bruins pour the pressure on now. Sanderson trying to center that puck. Did, but it's knocked down by Nanny out of center to Hextall or to Prentice, and it's offside as Hextall moved in and picked up the loose puck. The play was whistled down offside at the Bruin blue line. 4 4 The action has stopped with four minutes and four seconds left in the final period. Let's pause for a moment. V-E-N-T-U-R-A Ventura. Ventura It's an economy car It's a prestige car Ventura's an economy car With prestige Pontiac Ventura Right 
Ventura is the low-priced economy car from Pontiac. V-E-N-T-U-R-A. Ventura's a cut above. Ventura. Face off to be outside the Bruin blue line. It's Oliver, Grant, and Nevin for Minnesota against Sanderson, Westfall, and Walton for the Bruins. Nevin puts it into the Boston zone, and number 10, Bad Day, is back to get it. Pins away from Oliver out to Westfall. He was checked by O'Brien, and Bad Day has to start all over. Giving it to Don Ori. Ori to Walton, number 11. Nevin checked him from behind. And Don Ori, number 26, has it for the Bruins. Or a check by Grant, who centered it. No one in position. It goes to Walton. Headmanning the puck to Sanderson. Sanderson dropping it to Westfall. Westfall along the boards into the corner. Bottom of the reason. Here's Sanderson. Sanderson and Danny Grant intercepts him in the foot. Head to Nevin. Back to Grant. Grant trying to move the puck in front of that net. Tied up by Badney on the boards. And they hold it there as Badney knocks Grant down. Three minutes and 16 seconds. Left in the hockey game. Esposito, with three goals, now has 62 for the season. He had the 76-goal season last year. And he also now has 127 points. Last year, he had 152 points. So, he's proving that he was not just a one-year success with that great goal and point scoring of a year ago. He was only five goals, or was five goals behind his pace of a year ago coming into today's game. So with three today, he's only two or three goals off that pace of a year ago. Now it's Reed back into his own zone. Spins away from Cashman. Reed passes to Bob Nevin. Nevin moving it out at center ice and the puck goes to Murray Oliver. Oliver on left wing with a shot. Badney knocks it down. Badney along the board being checked by Kevin. Hodge comes in to help out. Traffic jam in the corner and it's held there. And we'll have another face-off in the Bruins zone to the right of Jerry Cheevers. Next Sunday, CBS will bring you another National Hockey League game. The St. Louis Blues meet the Chicago Blackhawks. The Blues are fighting for the Stanley Cup playoff berth along with Philadelphia. California and Pittsburgh. The Hawks, of course, first place finishers in the West Division. Be sure to see the action here on CBS, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, live next Sunday afternoon. Burns, number nine for the Bruins. Back to Ted Harris with two and a half minutes left. Now to Barry Gibbs. The goal's worthy at center. He's checked. Now to Esposito with the puck. Carries it in to the zone zone to Vadney. Vadney a pass to center. It's knocked down by Parisi. Parisi into Burns, and he's checked by Esposito. Esposito to Hodge. Back to Esposito. Passes it on left wing to Cashman, who's into the corner. Wayne Cashman back to that net. Standard it. It's cleared away by Goldsworthy, who feeds it to Burns. Then they come to center. Left wing pass to Parisi. Not to escape. And Burns... Received quite a check from Ori. Gets up and gets the puck again. Head to Goldsworthy. Ori knocks that down. Now Goldsworthy picks it up again into Burns. Cashman back checking. Has it for Boston. Cashman gets away from Parisi. Here's Hodge shooting it into the Minnesota zone. Back to get it as Gibbs. Gibbs along the boards trying to shoot it out of there. Puck comes outside the blue line and it's taken by Vadnay with a minute 35 left in the game. To Esposito. Esposito with a shot, and he shot it high off the glass. Now Burns for the North Star. Back of the net for Barry Gibbs. Gibbs leads it to head for Parisi, who just tipped it into the Bruin zone. And Carl Badney starts back for Boston. A pass to Kenny Hodge, number eight. Hodge over to Caston, and it goes off. Lou Nanny stick up over the glass. And the faceoff will be just inside the Minnesota blue line. Gump Worsley and Esposito chat as Espo skated in front of his goal. Grayson now heads to the bench. One oh nine left in the game. Hextall out against Danfield for the faceoff. 
Puck is dropped and it comes to Dennis O'Brien, number five. O'Brien shooting it to Prentiss. Prentiss puts it into the Boston zone and Orr has it with less than a minute to go. Orr standing back of his own net. Being watched by Hextall. Now Orr passes it to Stanfield. Stanfield having trouble in his own zone. Chased back into the corner. Number 17, Fred Stanfield. To Taylor. Front to Marcon. He couldn't get the shot. Worsley cleared it off in the corner. And Lou Nanny has it for Minnesota. Nanny out to Prentice. He gives it to Hextall, but Orr intercepts and shoots it to Bailey at center ice. Bailey, a lead pass for Marcotte. John Marcotte moving in, centered it. It was knocked away by Reed. Stanfield centered it. Here's Dallas Smith. Shot to Fletcher. Worsley, a good save on Stanfield from the close end to Fletcher. Now the North Stars credit with eight seconds left. In across the line, holding on to the puck, a rising shot that goes up over the glass. We'll have a face-off in the Bruins zone with two seconds left in the game. Here's the way the Boston scoring. Esposito leads it with three. McKenzie, Busick, Orr, and Marcotte have scored the others. Face-off just inside the Bruin blue line as Prentice comes over to the bench to get a new hockey stick. And we have just two seconds left. So the Bruins are going to move seven points ahead of the New York Rangers. Puck back behind the Bruin goal. The buzzer goes to end the game. Jerry Cheevers racks up his 30th game in a row without a loss. And the Bruins skate out to congratulate him, including Phil Esposito, who scored his hat trick here today and his 62nd goal of the season. That's the end of the game at the final score. The Boston Bruins 7 and the Minnesota North Stars 3. I'm Bobby Hull and I hate to lose, especially my hair. But you know, I was almost willing to lose it all just to get rid of my dandruff problem. Then my wife bought Endon Dandruff Shampoo. She liked it just for the shampoo. But I'll tell you, using Endon regularly is the best defense against dandruff I've ever found. Now, I want all the hair I can get. Endon, with the ingredient most medical authorities recommend, Endon Dandruff Shampoo. Your home is your castle, and you've got a lot of money invested in it. An investment that deserves the best protection you can get. And that's where Kemper Insurance comes in. Because with Kemper, you get a professional team of specialists who can insure your home against losses caused by fire or theft, or legal action by those who have accidents while on your property. You get better protection, surer protection from Kemper. What's more, the Kemper specialists can not only provide your home insurance needs, but your personal transportation insurance needs, and even your need for protection when you travel away from home. Kemper, small enough to insure your castle, big enough to ensure the castles of Hollywood's Burbank Studios, home of Columbia Pictures. Kemper. This is the way the East standings are now as a result of Boston's win. The New York Rangers can now pick up only 14 more points by the end of the year on the seven games left. They can finish up conceivably with 119. Boston just needs eight more points in the seven games remaining to them and they'll be the champions of the Eastern Division again, 112 to 105. Esposito, still the scoring leader, of course. Nobody even threatens him. This afternoon, Bobby Orr, for the first time, went ahead of Jean Rattel of the New York Rangers, who, of course, has been out with an injury. 112 points for Rattel's 109. 126 points for Phil Esposito. In the game this afternoon, the final score, the Boston Bruins 7 and the Minnesota North Stars 3. Shots on goal, Minnesota 34, Boston 27. Obviously, Boston had the more effective attack this afternoon, just about every single way. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of the third period this afternoon when Boston really iced the contest up. It could have been a tough one for Boston. All Minnesota needed was one good power play. They never really got to it. Bobby Orr scores, assist from Walton and Busick at 2 minutes and 42 seconds of the period. There's Busick, the shot. Worsley is down. 
or standing just outside the crease, number four right at the bottom of your screen. And the shot. Minnesota on a power play, a beautiful pass from Goldsworthy to Prentice standing just outside for the deflection. Goldsworthy is to score on one just a little bit later. Here again is Goldsworthy, and the same play coming just from the back boards instead of the side boards this time. It gave Minnesota a bit of a life, but Boston was still about two goals away from the end. Esposito was to get his hat trick at 12 minutes and 59 seconds. Uh, Esposito scored at 12.59 to go. Worsley again goes down. Can't quite get set for the rebound. And at 14.44, Marcotte of Boston with a fine individual effort, taking the puck away in Minnesota's end. Good for checking. Sort of a soft shot that caught a skate and caromed off. And that was all she wrote. Once again, then the final score, the Boston Bruins beating Minnesota by a score of 7-3. to three. Shots on goal. This is accurate this afternoon. Minnesota 34, Boston 27. We couldn't keep up with the penalties that went on this afternoon. They got a little bit tough. Once again, to check back into the Eastern Division, Montreal with 101 points, and the New York Rangers now, they were cut out if they hope for any chance at all at Boston at the number one spot, certainly looking over their shoulders at Montreal. The real fight is still on, of course, in the Western Division. Toronto here in the East with a total of 73 so far. Detroit with 67 and a few games left to play. More importantly, everybody in the first four positions here seems to be doing quite well as far as games played are concerned. No games in hand. So it was a good one for the Boston Bruins this afternoon, a tough one for the Rangers and the Montreal Canadiens, but of course awfully tough for Minnesota. Let's go back up to Dan. Okay, Jim Gordon, and next Sunday we remind you, CBS will bring you another National Hockey League game, the St. Louis Blues in that real battle for playoff spots in the West Division, only three points separating the third place team from the sixth place team. Meet the Chicago Blackhawks. 2 p.m. Eastern Time, live and in color. The final score here today, the Boston Bruins 7, the Minnesota North Stars 3. This is Dan Kelly for Jim Gordon saying goodbye from the Boston Garden. National Hockey League was brought to you by Kemper Insurance. Small enough, big enough for any size insurance need. And by Firestone, the people tire people, who now put steel between you and tire trouble. And by Carter Hall, the pipe tobacco that tastes like pipe tobacco smell. And by STP Corporation, makers of world famous products for your car. The National Hockey League telecasts are produced by CBS Television Sports. Thank you.